The next Major League Fishing Team Challenge happens next week, October 24th through the 29th, in early Texas, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button. Make sure you're part of the team and family, and thank you. What else is there to say? Thank you. If you're not a subscriber, click that button. It's free. You should be. There's like 75% of you that don't even click that subscribe button, but watch the channel. So do me a favor, click it, and welcome to the team. Stage three of the Major League Fishing Team Challenge happens next week, and I believe this is one of the best fishing tournaments to watch. I've said it a few times. It's exciting to watch. There are a lot of things that happen in this tournament that don't happen with all the other tournaments. And this is the first time that they're actually going to early Texas. I know that sounds weird, early. That's the name of the city. They don't, it isn't a very big city. I've written some notes about early Texas. They have a population of about 3,300 people. The city is roughly 3.7 miles, and it is centrally located in pretty much the direct center of Texas. This is a really crazy small community, and Major League Fishing coming in probably helps boost a little bit of the economy. Now, I believe they're going to fish Lake Brownwood. But before we get into that, each team, it's a two-man team. And what makes this team challenge so amazing is there's several things. First off, they all are equipped with the same boat. There isn't scopes and transducers and extra transducers and tons of monitors or all that stuff. There is four people that have to fit on the boat because they have two anglers, a cameraman, and an official. And these anglers do not have practice time. That's where the key to this is. They are learning on the fly about where they're going to fish, which again, I think is Lake Brownwood. And these anglers don't know where they're going until 30 days prior to the tournament. We also just heard about where the, who the teams are, and that's what we'll go over in a few seconds. But all fishable waters 60 miles around early Texas have been deemed unfishable. You're not allowed to go. And that is part of the pre-excitement about these tournaments. There are a lot of times that the anglers get lots of days beforehand or know where they're going beforehand. And this is allowing the anglers to have to catch fish on the fly. Now, to be quite honest, you'll see a lot more of traditional fishing. But it doesn't mean that people aren't going to put on their forward-facing sonar and scope. But there's going to be a lot of grass fishing if they go to Lake Brownwood. There are going to be a lot of power fishing. This is a great place for decent sized fish. And by decent, I think we'll see some seven pound fish caught. And these anglers will be power fishing in that two to eight foot water depth, I think. Lots of grass, lots of rock, lots of things, structure underwater that allows anglers or these anglers to go out there and fish the way that most people want them to fish. If you, we would take a, a survey, I think most people will say they don't want to see them out there scoping. And why this is so exciting and fun to watch is, like I said earlier, they have to learn on the fly. These anglers look at maps, they talk, they communicate. They have to figure out how each other likes to fish. And when you have all of that put together and the drama of fishing and the opportunity to win a, a bunch of money, these anglers really have a great enthusiasm to them. I think when you put two anglers together, they start to enjoy the fishing more. They feed off of each other. They're, they're happy for one another. They want to see each one succeed because it helps the team. And as a team format, the Major League Fishing Team Challenge is as good as it gets right now. But who are the teams? Here's where I want your help. Which of these teams wins? There's going to be some favorites, and I'm going to tell you who my favorite is, but remember they're, remember they're in Texas. So you have Justin Lucas and uh, Brent Ayler. You have Montgomery and Faircloth. You have Jones Jr. and Defoe. You have Sprague and Thrift. Le you have Labrun and Howell, which might be his last Major League Fishing event, which is kind of cool. Sad at the same time, but understandable because he's moving over to the Leeds. You have Strader and Chapman, Cooper and Evers, Wheeler and Cannell, Neal and Morgan, Clawson and Villa, Wall and Hayes, and Sfoyer and Elam. When I look at those 12 teams, two-man teams, there's a few people that stand out. 
Jones Jr. is from Texas, so he's going to uh, pick up some subtle techniques that will help him and Defoe do well. I also think Sprague and Thrift are two anglers you need to watch. Sprague is also a Texas angler. Knowing how the fish react in the fall is really going to be important. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that say Wheeler and Cannell. Those should be the favorites. My favorites are Brent Ayler and Justin Lucas. Justin Lucas, I've, I've been following Justin for years. And quite honestly, I'm probably one of the biggest Ayler fans there is. I think that guy can fish. This dude can fish anywhere, any place, any time. But for me, Lucas and Ayler are the two guys I hope win. So do me a favor, in the comments, put the two anglers, the team that you think is going to win. Hope you watch it. I think you'll be surprised. It really is a great format to watch. It's a great fishing schedule or team challenge that uh, really has, it's really enjoyable to watch. The camaraderie, the fun, it just seems like the anglers are having fun again. And that's what I want to see. So comment below what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you very soon. Cheers. Thank you. And tight lines.